Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day, thanks in a large part to our pals at the VFS School of Game Design. Thank you so much, Vancouver Film School. Today's rundown is dedicated to Seb Jimenez, who is our biggest fan in Miami, Florida. Thank you so much, Seb. This rundown, we wrapped it up, and we're giving it to you. Tom Nook wants to swindle you out of your money, your real-life money. Nintendo has announced that the long-awaited Animal Crossing mobile game, first announced last year, will finally hit iOS and Android devices worldwide late next month. Known as Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, the game is basically a simplified version of the 3DS and console Animal Crossing games, with players managing their own campsite instead of an entire town. It will have similar crafting and relationship building elements from the previous games, but the biggest difference comes in the form of microtransactions. Yep, it's a mobile game, so it has microtransactions. Players will be able to use real-life money to buy a new in-game currency called Leaf Tickets, which can be used to speed up crafting times and buy more items. Because Nintendo has a sense of humor, the character associated with Leaf Tickets is none other than Animal Crossing's sleazy businessman, Tom Nook, which seems appropriate for a microtransaction system. I guess he couldn't turn over a new leaf. <laughs> Nintendo's journey towards microtransactions has seen a few stumbles. Their first big mobile game, Super Mario Run, didn't use a microtransaction system and instead charged a flat fee for everything, similar to a 3DS game. But this actually backfired, with most mobile players refusing to pay up front. Their second big mobile game, Fire Emblem Heroes, did use a microtransaction system and it paid off big time. So expect the company to rake in similar amounts of dough with Animal Crossing. It should be fun to see how long players can resist the urge to give Tom Nook and Nintendo their hard-earned money when the game arrives. Looking ahead, Nintendo is rumored to be working on an Animal Crossing game for the Switch, but don't expect to see that for a while. Some heartwarming and very golden news has come in about the Star Wars Galaxy just in time for Life Day. The Moss Eisley Cantina bartender Akmena, who was played by late Golden Girls star B. Arthur in the infamous Star Wars Holiday Special, has been added to Disney's official Star Wars canon for the first time. Well, I'm glad about that. She's mentioned in the new Star Wars anthology novel from a certain point of view, which just hit shelves, so she's no longer just a part of the old expanded universe. Have another drink. This one's on me. If you don't know what canon means, it's a nerd way of saying that a character, location, or event is officially part of a franchise and distinguishes it from non-canon material that can be easily ignored or discarded. Just because Agmena herself has been given recognition doesn't mean that the rest of the Star Wars Holiday Special is canon. The Empire has closed us down! Most of the special is still being ignored by the rest of the franchise, which is good news because it's frankly terrible. It aired once in November 1978 and was so awful that George Lucas disowned it and has never given it an official release. So the footage you're seeing here comes from a 39-year-old VHS copy that someone recorded from the original TV broadcast. All of you are an important part of my life, pal. I'm glad I could be here. The special itself is basically a series of skits and musical numbers tied together by a narrative involving Chewbacca and his family who celebrate a Christmas-style Wookiee holiday called Life Day on their homeworld, Kashyyyk. I wouldn't worry about you. Chewbacca, I know him and he hasn't missed a life day yet, right? <laughs> Even though it's legendarily awful, several other small pieces have already been added to canon, most notably the bounty hunter Boba Fett, who actually debuted in an animated segment for the special two years before his appearance in The Empire Strikes Back. Follow me, friend. The planet of Kashyyyk is also canon, but we're still waiting to find out if Chewbacca's family members, like his wife Mala and son Lumpy, will be given canon status as well. <laughs> Some of us are holding out hope that Disney will give the holiday special an official release, which would be a great present for Life Day. This holiday is yours, but we all share with you the hope that this day brings us closer to freedom and to harmony and to peace. No matter how different we appear, we're all the same in our struggle against the powers of evil and darkness. I hope that this day will always be a day of joy in which we can reconfirm our dedication and our courage, and more than anything else, our love for one another. This is the promise of the Tree of Life. And one of the recent Star Wars villains is leaving the galaxy far, far away and heading to the Marvel Universe. Rogue One actor Ben Mendelsohn is reportedly up for the part of the main antagonist in the upcoming Captain Marvel movie. 
According to Variety, Mendelssohn is currently in talks for the role, and although no official announcements have been made, the site claims that his character will be the leader of the villainous, shape-shifting alien race known as the Skrulls. They've long been a staple of the Marvel comics, and this will be their first appearance in one of the movies, although, given their shape-shifting abilities, they may have already appeared and audiences wouldn't know it. Ben Mendelssohn is an accomplished actor and will no doubt be a worthy adversary of Captain Marvel, who's already set to be played by Oscar winner Brie Larson. The film hits Earth in 2019. Early next year, we get to find out if the Metal Gear series is going to survive. Konami has announced that their controversial new game, Metal Gear Survive, will sneak onto the PS4, Xbox One, and PC on February 20th, 2018. The game was first announced last year when it surprised everyone by completely shaking up the Metal Gear formula. Instead of being a tactical stealth game, this one is a survival horror game with a military angle. Players join together with soldiers to fight zombies. Many fans, especially our pal Johnny Millennium, are very apprehensive about the game and fear that it could ruin the entire franchise. This is also the first Metal Gear game being made by Konami following the departure of creator Hideo Kojima, who had a very public falling out with the publisher in late 2015. Needless to say, he is not involved with the development, and that alone would be enough to make fans skeptical. Despite all the baggage, we're holding out hope that Metal Gear Survive will be a decent experience. Keep your fingers crossed and stay by your codex for more info. The makers of Middle-earth Shadow of War are hoping that players will want to continue their journey with some more content. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment has detailed what's included in the game's Expansion Pass, or Season Pass, which has been available to buy since last month. The biggest pieces of content are two new story expansions called The Blade of Galadriel and The Desolation of Mordor, which will give players new weapons, characters, and locations. Also included in the Season Pass are new enemy orc tribes for the game's nemesis system. And that's about it. The Season Pass by itself costs 50 bucks in Canada, so hopefully this is enough content to satisfy buyers. The two orc tribes arrive before the end of the year, and the story add-ons arrive in early 2018. Keep in mind that buying the Season Pass is separate from the in-game microtransactions and loot boxes, which have generated plenty of controversy. Many have accused the game of relying too heavily on microtransactions, with players being encouraged to spend money in order to win, which is never very popular in a AAA game. It remains to be seen if microtransactions will play a role in the Season Pass content. It turns out that one of Microsoft's biggest gaming innovations just wasn't able to connect with players. It's official, the Kinect peripheral for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One is dead. In a new interview with the website Codot Design, Microsoft engineer and Kinect creator Alex Kipman revealed that they've ended production of the motion sensing device, which means that once all the available stock is gone, it will be gone forever. This has been a long time coming. Kinect launched in 2010 amidst the motion sensing craze following the success of the original Wii, but despite decent sales at the start, the device quickly dropped in popularity when consumers started to realize that most of the games for it just weren't very good. A modified version of Kinect came with the original launch version of the Xbox One and was actually a mandatory add-on, something that Microsoft quickly changed, and they've been doing less and less with the device ever since. Now that they've ended production, it's the final nail in the coffin. This doesn't mean Microsoft is finished with motion sensing or voice control, though. A lot of the technology developed for Kinect has found its way into more recent Microsoft products, so it wasn't a total loss. That's it for the rundown. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about game design, visit our friends at vfs.edu. We'll be back again some more with a brand new rundown for you. But in the meantime, watch some of the other content we've been making. We'll have reviews of Super Mario Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Origins tomorrow. If you like our content, hit subscribe and that little bell, okay?